Hey, and welcome to another video. And today we're going to be going over Autogen. In my last video, I talked about ChatDev, which was basically an autonomous agency that helped you build software by having AI agents talk to each other by giving them roles and tasks to perform. Well, Autogen is slightly different. There's actually a key difference between Autogen and ChatDev. So I'm going to go over that, how to set this up, and then we're going to go through four use cases and actually tell it to run this software and then see what the output was and go over the code while we're doing it. Let's get started. For chat dev, you can give roles to AI agents and you can have them talk to each other. So for instance, I can have the CEO speak to the programmer or I can have a QA talk to a code reviewer or however you want to do it based on how you want them to perform the task. Well, the key thing is that you can have one AI agent talk to another. However, in Autogen, you can have what's called a group chat. So you can have multiple AI agents talk to each other in a group chat. And you can also have a human user. So after maybe the CEO, the programmer, and the designer are done uh, talking about their task for that iteration, then I can come in as a user and say what I liked, what I didn't like, what I want to add, what I want to remove, and so forth. With that out of the way, let's get started with the tutorial, how to set it up and get on with the use cases. The first way we can set this up is using a code space. So if you're in the GitHub page, which I'll have a link to in the description, you scroll down until you come under Quick Start you click on open in GitHub code spaces. You'll create your own code space, or I already have one in my, in my case. So I'm going to resume this. And after a few minutes, it'll be up and running and you can start developing. But I'm going to show you to do this locally, and then we'll get into some use case examples. For the first use case, we're just going to clone the repository. So to do that in the GitHub page, you just clone the repository first. And then whenever you do that and you open up your IDE, whenever you get done cloning it, one of the first things we're going to need is when you go to this config file, I think this will be labeled uh, OpenAI config list sample. So just take out the example part and you're going to need your OpenAI key. Well, in order to do that, we go over to platform.openai.com. Once you sign in with your OpenAI account at the top right, you click on your account, then you go to view API keys, and then you can just use, you can create a new secret key and then you just copy the key. And then you'll come back to your config file and you'll paste it in here. And the next thing you need to make sure you have is the Anaconda interpreter. So if you just go to anaconda.com slash download, which I have a link to in the description, you just come here and you download this. So after you clone this, and if you go to the test directory, you'll see there's this file called toagent.py. So in this Python file, what we do is this is pretty simple. We just get the config file. So this is basically for our open AI key. And then we have an assistant agent. All this is doing is this is going to help aid us in developing uh, the software that we want. So we go ahead and create an assistant agent, give it a name, and then give it the LLM config. And this is very basic. So it's just really the model that we're giving it. And then we have a user proxy. So in this user proxy agent, uh, this is where we're going to have some human interaction, okay, where after the user proxy agent and the assistant are talking to each other, then it's going to come to us and we can say if we want to improve it, whether we're fine with it, we're done, whatever it is. And this code execution config, what this is saying is there, there are more parameters you can give this, but in the working directory, we want to give this code that gets created when we're done, we want to go to the coding folder. That's where we want all the code to go to, okay? Right now there's nothing, but when we're done, there will be a Python file in here. And the last basic thing is we need to initiate the chat between the agents. So in order to do that, we have the user proxy, initiate the chat, and the first parameter is the assistant. So we want the user or the human agent to interact with the assistant agent. And the message uh, that we want to give it is to plot a chart of NVIDIA and Tesla stock price change year to date. Now we'll go ahead and run this. We'll go Python test slash to agent dot py. Okay, so now what's happening is the user proxy is telling the assistant to plot a chart of NVIDIA and Tesla like we asked it to. Now the assistant is going to come back and tell us that we need to install the necessary data or the libraries to make this happen first. And then it go, goes ahead and gives us the Python code that we need in order to make this happen. And then as you can see here, we need to provide feedback to the assistant. Now I'm okay with this. I don't really need any feedback. So I'm just going to hit enter. And when you hit enter, it goes ahead and executes uh, that code for us. And as you can see, it created the stock prices of NVIDIA and Tesla and plotted it for us from year to date. Okay, great. Now we saw something in action. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own project, install Autogen, and then we're gonna create our own top 10 chart. Okay, and we're gonna just do it from scratch. Much like the previous example, the first thing we need is a config file. So you create a new file, call it openai underscore config, 
underscore list. And all I'm going to do is copy the one from the previous section. So we have our model and the OpenAI key. Now, the next thing we want is to create our Python file. So we're going to create a Python file, call it top10.python. All right, so in this file, the first thing we're going to need is all of our imports. Then we need to retrieve our config list so we can uh, let the agent use this LLM model. And then we go and create our assistant. And we do that by instantiating a new assistant agent. We need to give it a name and the LLM config that we wanted to use. So really, in this case, the model. And then we need our user agent. And we give it a name as well. And then the code execution config. So when we tell it to write the Python script this time, it's going to be putting it into the working directory called code. And then the last thing is we need to initiate the chat so we can start having these agents develop software for us. So in this case, we want the user proxy to initiate the chat with the assistant. And the message this time is to write to a Python file the code to plot a chart of the top 10 countries by landmass. And then the last thing we need before we can run this is to install Autogen. So you'll just say pip install pi Autogen. So just open up your terminal, take this in, give it a few minutes to install everything, and then we're ready to go. Now that we're done, all we need to do in order to run this is python top10.py. Okay, so the user proxy started the chat with the, to the assistant, and we said write to a Python file to plot the chart. Then the assistant comes back and says this task can be accomplished by using uh, these certain libraries. So here's the Python code that it's saying we can use. So let's go ahead and press enter. Okay, there were actually there was actually another error, uh, but it's self-corrected, remade the Python script again, pressing enter. Let's see if it works this time. And it does. And this is great. This is this is what we wanted. We told it to plot something. It had errors, so then it figured out the error itself on the next iteration. And I could have mentioned something else in there for it to do, but I just let it do itself and it plotted the chart for us. And that's wonderful. That's exactly what we wanted. For the next one, let's create a new file. Let's call it pong.py. How are we going to have the agents make this? Well, this is going to be a group chat. So we're going to have a coder, a, pr a product assistant, and then uh, the user agent, which is us. And if we don't like something in the middle of it, or we want to add something, when it comes to our turn to be in the conversation, we can again ask it to add or remove something from the software. So just like last time, we need to have all of our imports. We need to get the config, which is from the open AI config. And then we need to get our LLM. So what this is saying is we need to get our config. So basically the model, we're going to, we're going to give it a C. So the seed 42, if you look in your cache folder, uh, give it a timeout of two minutes instead of just one minute, because it's a little bit bigger creating a pong game. So you give it a little more time to create it. And then we're going to have three agents. Like we mentioned, we're gonna have the user, which is just us and the human input mode. Now there's three different modes and we're going to say always meaning at every point in the process, because this is a little bit bigger chat, every point in the process, we want to have our input, whether we like it or we don't. And we can tell them, we can tell the agents to do something else if we don't like it, or you can just hit enter and it'll go to the next step. We have the coder. This is the name, the LLM that we give it. Then we have the product uh, manager. Now we need to initiate the chat, but because we're going to have a group chat and this is going to be a little different, we had to have, a, we have to create the group chat and then also create a group chat manager. So we do this by saying group chat equals a new group chat uh, entity. And the agents are going to be the, the user, the coder and the product manager. And then we have a manager, which we instantiate the group chat manager entity. And then finally, we need to initiate the chat. And we do this by saying user proxy dot initiate chat. We want to start with the manager, which is really the group. And we want to tell it to build a classic and basic Pong game. And just like before, we're going to run it with Python uh, Pong dot PY. Okay. So it started creating the Python script for us. Uh, so here is the script. Um, here's all the code that it generated. And what we can do is when it comes down here for our input or our feedback, as it's calling it to the whole group, you just press enter and we're going to see if it works. Hey, look at that. It worked on the first try. Okay. So here, my input is I, I want to create a scoreboard for player a, which is left paddle player B, which is the right paddle. And then also can you make the movements of the paddles a little quicker. So now our input is we liked it, but we want to do or add something else to it. So. Now we give this response back to the chat, to the group chat, and then they're going to respond back, take that code and hopefully add the requirements that we wanted. I feel like a, uh, a scrum master right now and we'll see what it does. So let's see if this worked now. So we hit enter. So there is a scoreboard and it does look like the paddles move a little bit quicker. 
and I mean, this is amazing. This is the power of having these autonomous agents work together to create something for us, and especially having user input so that we can test it ourselves, say, ah, we don't like this, or we want to add this, maybe remove that. And this isn't the most functional Pong game you're ever going to play. But I mean, look how quick that was. That took a few minutes to create. Whereas if I would do it myself, I mean, that would have taken much longer, okay? Okay, and for the last use case, we have a math proxy agent. So not long ago, they added the math agent. And what this can do is you can give it a problem and it can solve it for you going through step by step on how it solved it and then finally coming to the answer. It's a little different. The first thing you need to do, and I'll have in the description, is you need to install, a, you install the math agent, which is separate from Autogen. It's a part of Autogen, but it's just not this in the same installs we had before. Um, you have the config list is the same. We're going to create an assistant, uh, the system message, the LLM. We're going to give it a C to 42 again. We're going to give it a bigger timeout because it's, it could take longer depending on the math question you give it. It could take it longer to come up with the next step on how to solve it. So we want to give it time to do that. And then we come up with a math proxy agent. So we create, we instantiate a new math agent, give it a name. We don't want to have human interaction in this example because we want the agents to do it themselves and work it out until it gives us the solution. All right. And then we have our math problem. So I'm not gonna read this out, but this is the, this is the sample math problem that we're going to give it. And then we want the math agent to initiate the chat with the assistant to solve this problem. When we run it, uh, the math agent is going to talk to the assistant. Tell it to, let's use Python to solve the problem, okay? So it's gonna come down here. Uh, here is the problem that it's trying to solve. Uh, here it's trying to write Python code to solve the problem. Uh, it's finding errors in the code here. It's finding more errors in the code here until finally um, it comes up with something. It gives the steps on how it would solve it in Python code. And then the math agent finally says, excellent, your code has successfully calculated the value of X minus Y. It looks like the, the value is negative 48, and that's true based on, uh, if you look at this example in the GitHub, they come up with the value of negative 48 as well. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, or if there's something that I didn't explain clearly enough and you need a little bit more help, please let me know, and I would be more than happy to help you understand. Here's my last video on ChatDev, and I'll see you next video. Have a great day.